What is up? Welcome to NBA Top Shot Weekly. I am Alex Kennedy. He is Oliver Maroney. This is our first episode. Oliver, what's up, man? What's up? How's, how's it going? Good, man. I'm really excited. We have a special guest joining us very soon. We're going to be talking Top Shot, NFTs, opening up some rare packs. We have Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban joining us very shortly. He'll be here in about five minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and open up some packs, talk to him for a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is our first episode of NBA Top Shot Weekly. We're super excited to kick this thing off. Uh, we both got into Top Shot, I would say about a month and a half, two months ago. Oliver, you were before me. You're the one that introduced me to it, so I appreciate you for that. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, we've been obsessed with it ever since. So we wanted to make a show out of it where we open up packs, talk about it, take questions from you guys. We're going to give away some uh, packs and uh, a LeBron James moment in the next few weeks. Today, we actually have a, a limited edition pack that we're giving away. It's a Series 2 Release 10 pack. Uh, you can enter that giveaway at basketballnews.com slash top shot. We are going to choose a winner at the end of the show. Mark's going to join us and, uh, and, and select a winner. We're going to open up the pack on the air. You're going to see what you basically got. And then whenever the gifting period opens up again, we're going to send those moments to whoever won. So we're really excited. Someone's going to win a pack today. So again, check that out at basketballnews.com slash top shot. And yeah, we're just super excited to get the show started. Uh, Oliver, when did you first get into top shot? How did you hear about it? Cause I know you're the one introduced me. How did you first hear about it? Yeah, I heard about it through um, uh, a mutual friend of ours. I mean, for, for me, uh, Jack Settleman is the guy who kind of got me into it. Uh, Jack, I've known for a long time. He's with snapback sports. He's great dude super friendly. Um, I would highly encourage you guys to, to take a look at his stuff, but, uh, yeah, he got me into it initially. Um, some of his videos, uh, we texted back and forth. I was like, yo, what is this? Like, come give me, give me the scoop here. And, uh, he's the one who initially, I'll, I'll be honest, he was one of the first people to get me into sports cards. And so, you know, um, that that's, that's how our relationship kind of started. And, uh, obviously with this new top shot project, I mean, for us, Alex, me, you, um, if you're a basketball fan, it's just like a natural fit for like basically anybody who enjoys watching basketball. And then now you add in like the cryptocurrency fan base and um, some of the other additions that they have. Uh, and, and there's just a lot of people that that enjoy this. And I think the way that they've structured the site, how you can buy, trade and sell and just like I think for me that the best part about it is like the community aspect, like everybody in the community is super supportive. Uh, they love seeing like pack drops and kind of what you can get inside of a pack. The players are a big deal, obviously. And what player you get, uh, Mark obviously has one of the, one of the, the bigger names on the platform right now in Luka Doncic. Uh, and so I think it's just fun to see kind of like the reaction, the community aspect of it. And um, as a whole, I've, I've really enjoyed just trading and collecting these things. And, and it's something I think a lot of a lot of people grow up with. I mean, a long time ago, you know, uh, when I was a little kid, I used to have sports cards in a, a shoebox. I'm sure you had the same thing. And I think this is like the new generation of, of collectible. And uh, obviously, it's, it's very easy to sign up, to use. And uh, I think that definitely helps uh, in this instance. No, I totally agree. Yeah, I collected when I was younger. I collected, you know, football cards, basketball cards, baseball cards. So it's been cool to kind of get back into collecting because it's been a while since I've had anything like that. So I'm curious, Oliver, what have you been collecting recently? What have you been going after? What kind of moments? It's a great question. Well, there's uh, there's this tentative LeBron challenge for um, the the seeing stars moments. So I'm, I'm going hard after that. I actually decided to to finish that up last night. So I'm excited to to, to get that moment whenever that comes out. Um, I went, you know, both of us, Alex and I, we went in and we did the, the Anthony Davis challenge for the cool cats moment. That was awesome. I'm, I'm enjoying the challenges. There's just something to it that, that, that adds a little bit of extra flair to, to, to that moment. And it makes it that much more impactful. So I'm big on the challenges, but outside of that, I, you know, one of my first top shot purchases was a bam at a bio, uh, over LeBron in the playoffs in the finals. And I, I, I just love that moment. And there's not, there's, really no reason for it, but it, it's like the definition of like that hard nose, like grit and grind big man that you don't really see in the NBA a, a whole lot nowadays. So for me, 
that Bam Adebayo moment really holds strong in my mind and uh, so, one that I'll definitely remember. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I'm definitely going after a lot of Series 1 moments and rookies. Uh, I'm excited about the rookie badges that are coming very soon. And I mean, it's the same thing I used to do when I collected trading cards too. I used to always just go after rookie cards. I, you know, I would buy them individually. I would buy the packs and try to grab rookie cards. So I'm all about the rookies right now, although the prices are going way up. You know, they're, they're increasing a lot. It's getting pretty expensive to go after rookies, but uh, I'm always targeting those. Real quick, I do want to answer some people in the chat. Some people are asking about packs. We actually have a giveaway that we're doing where we're going to give away three packs, and they're actually rare packs. They're Series 2 Release 10, so you can't get them anywhere else. We're giving them away over the next three weeks. At the end of this episode, we're going to give one of the packs away. Uh, all you have to do is enter at basketballnews.com slash top shot. And if you enter that contest, you could be entered for a pack. So we're giving one away today, one away next Thursday, and one away the following Thursday. So three packs. You have a chance to win three rare packs. And then in uh, on April 1st, we're going to give away a LeBron James moment. Uh, it's number 283 out of 7,500. So if you want to win a LeBron James moment, also enter that Top Shot giveaway because you'll be entered for all of them. You could win a pack. You could win the LeBron moment. So basketballnews.com slash top shot and you're entered to win all of it i'm really excited to give away that lebron moment I'm, that's gonna be so much fun uh i can't believe uh, I, you and i were jealous that we can't enter the contest but we'll be giving away a, a pretty rare lebron moment and it's a great serial number too great serial number serial numbers are a big deal now you know you get the lower serial numbers they're definitely worth more uh the giveaway is awesome and amazing and and like you said it's it's kind of a limited edition thing you can't really get it anywhere else right now um, and everybody wants packs. When packs? When packs? Uh, so, <laughs> if you if you want to try and put yourself into the contest, uh, like Alex said, um, head onto the website and take a look and, and enter your name into that. It'd be super awesome to see somebody win and let uh, let Mark Cuban uh, announce your name. Maybe <laughs> here I'm going to pull the LeBron moment up that we're giving away, so we can yeah. we can show it off a bit. And then Oliver, do you want to pull up the giveaway screen that I can throw to you in a second, and we can show that too? Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, no worries. I'm going to add this real quick. And then, oh, hold up here. And then here is the moment. Are we showing that right now? There you go. I see it. Perfect. So I yeah, you could, to... go ahead. I'll pull the giveaway up one next. But you could win this moment uh, again. Basketballnews.com slash Top Shot. It's super easy. You have to just follow our Twitter account, follow us on Instagram, and then download our app. And then you're entered to win. You could win this LeBron moment. You could win one of three packs that we're giving away over the next three weeks. And then again, at the end of this episode, we're going to give away that first pack. So definitely check that out. We're really excited about it. Uh, yeah, we just want to show off what that moment was. But uh, we'll be joined by Mark Cuban here in one moment. And again, we're going to talk Top Shot, NFTs. We're going to all open up some packs. It's going to be a ton of fun. But in the meantime, like I said, enter that giveaway. So at the end, you can maybe get a pack or maybe April 1st, you get that LeBron James moment. Definitely. No, I'm excited. It'll be big. Uh, somebody in the chat or hopefully wins. Uh, it'll be exciting to see. And obviously, um, we've got a ton of Top Shot comments in here, questions. Uh, super excited about um, having Mark on. Definitely curious to see what other people's thoughts are about Mark talking about Top Shot, uh, seeing, seeing what he can discuss around the Top Shot community and around NFTs as a whole. So I'm um, super excited about that as well, Alex. What do you, what do you think? I mean, upcoming for for top shot uh, other than what you're collecting what do you think um is a moment that you would like to have in your collection i'm just excited for them to roll out more like former player moments like i know they did the run it back series where you know you could get a dirk or a sean marion or some of these you know older players i'm excited for there to be more retired players and former players that you can get so i, I think that's going to be so much fun where you know it's not just from this season or last season where you can open it up and you know, we can look, you can get a moment from years ago, maybe. I think that's going to be a ton of fun. You know, what is there a certain moment that you're looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, obviously the LeBron seeing stars moment, I think is going to be huge. Anything LeBron on the website does well, but I'm curious to see how they evolve over time. I mean, I think we've we've heard conversations about how they could implement this in the NBA and how, how this could be utilized. And so that that's really my intrigue with Top Shot is kind of the future uh, aspects of this and, and kind of what that could mean and what could, what that could be. No, absolutely. So if anyone has any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. We'll try our best to answer them. Uh, Mark should be joining us here in a second, and then we'll get started talking with him and opening up some packs. Uh, I'm curious to, to see what everyone uh, is collecting right now, what moments you guys are going after. Um, 
I guess, Oliver, what have been some of the moments that, uh, again, I mentioned like rookies and, and series one moments. What are some of the moments that, you know, you're kind of thinking could be a good investment now that could be on the rise, you know, maybe in the near future? Yeah, I mean, I love all the rookies to 4,000, their first moments on Top Shot. Obviously, they've mentioned the badges are going to be there at some point. So we're talking about, you know, uh, the OB Toppins of the world. Um, so, you know, outside of the Anthony Edwards, James Wiseman, and LaMelo Balls, which seem to be much higher than the rest of the rookies, I think there's definitely some value there. And I've been really intrigued with some of some of the rookies and, and people in, in, in those. So um, I, I think... For me, I'm looking at those to 4,000 rookies, the first moment, and uh, you know, looking at those badges as something that people are definitely going to cherish and probably look for in the near future. And I see a lot of people asking us questions right now. Some people are saying, you know, if they're a new Top Shot user, what advice would you give them? You know, what kind of moment should they target? What should they know about the platform? You know, can you? Is there any advice that you can give? Yeah, I mean, for me, I'd say do your research. Like, I think most importantly, Top Shot, I don't think you should always use this as like a way to flip. I'm personally of the of the idea that you should be going after players that you want to go after. So um, whether that's LeBron, that's your favorite player, whether it's Curry, I love, you know, uh, personally going after guys that I believe in or I, I trust. And that's what I that's what I did, like with sports oh. cards and things of that nature. I think we have a special guest here joining us. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and add him in. Hey, it's Mark Cuban. What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Going? Good, Great. good, 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 good. Oh, uh, there we go. We got him in here, Mark. How how are you? Uh, how are you holding up? How's well, it going over there? It's going good. We have a game in an hour, so ask me in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'll get you. We'll, we'll start asking these questions here for you. I mean, at first, I wanted to I wanted to talk about NFTs. I, you're you're an early adopter of of mm -hmm. what this movement has become. For people who don't understand what NFTs are or the concepts kind of behind them, how would Mark Cuban explain what they are and why they're valuable? It's just you know a digital, it's just a digital collectible. Period. End of story. Yeah. And you know. A collectible can be anything you want to collect. You know, I collected CDs. I collected DVDs. You used to be able to buy and resell CDs and buy and resell DVDs and LPs. Now it's just a digital version of all that. It's not complicated. It's not anything fancy. And the beauty of it is there's no hassle factor, factor to it. So like, hey, wait, I've got some of my cards here. See this guy here? Wait, yeah. Oh, that's, look at that. That's the original number 77. That's not Luca. That's Jake Voskul, the original number 77 on the Dallas Mavericks, the one oh, and only. Goodness. And so like a true collector of cards would like be mad at me for not having it in a case, right? And not having it all wrapped up. And so if Jake Voskul had a moment, I don't have to worry about any of those things. When you deal with physical collectors, collectibles, you have to worry about grading it, storing it, packaging it, shipping it or receiving it, valuing it, and the valuations are not efficient whatsoever. One card store is gonna value it differently. One website's gonna value it differently from another. With NFTs, because it's all digital, the marketplaces are becoming a lot more efficient. They're not all the way there yet, but they're getting there. And you take away all the hassles of physical ownership. Look at StockX, right? Why was StockX so popular? Because you didn't have to take delivery of the shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. right so you're collecting shoes without owning the shoe without having possession of the shoes this is the same thing you're collecting something that you that you enjoy and like anything else i collected stamps at a kid as a kid not because i was going to use them to send a letter because i thought they were interesting and cool and this is the same way you know having a luka Doncic step back three to win against the clippers moment is cool having josh green's first dunk as an nba player is cool Right. And, and, you know, particularly for Gen Z, everything of value is on their phone. You know, for Gen Z, you don't have a house. You're too young. Maybe you have a car. Probably not yet. You have some clothes you like and everything else is digital. Your brand identity, literally brand identity on Instagram and, and TikTok and Snapchat. That's who you are. And you can show all those things and all these things on those places. Right. You can show it on your phone. I mean, just ask anybody who's had to try to delete pictures from their phone. No, yeah, you're right. You, you can't tell me that what's on your phone isn't the most valuable, personal, <laughs> important thing that you have. And yeah. that's just the way it works. Absolutely. 
Oliver. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I, I, I want to follow up with this just because sometimes actually a lot of people who aren't on Top Shot who aren't into NFTs ask, why should I buy a moment over just a recorded YouTube clip? I know you referenced this in your blog. Dumbest how question do you res- ever. It's Dumbest the biggest question. question that we get. Okay. We need you to clear the air, Mark. We need you to help us out. We've been saying Back the same to thing Jake for a Boschel. while. Yes. Back to Jake Bosco, right? This picture is on the internet somewhere, right? This data is on the internet somewhere. I could take a picture of this, if it's not, and put it on the internet anywhere and put it on Twitter and eight point whatever million of my followers would have the opportunity to see it and download it. The ability to see it on the internet is irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. The, you know, it's a collectible period end of story. Yep. What's gold, right? People buy and sell gold. They certainly don't have those bars in their house, right? You ever walked into somebody's house and there's a stack of gold bars. Oh, gee, you must, you know, you don't. And when you have gold jewelry, you hide it, right? Unless you're a rapper and you're wearing it on a chain, right? Um, you know, or whoever wearing it on the chain. And so with collectibles, it's just things that people collect and find value in and find uniqueness in. And what even makes it even more collectible is the algorithmic scarcity, right? Meaning that, you know, the LEs have X number, the, you know, the rookies had 12,000. The first big run had 15,000. Now they have 35,000. And you can see that in the pricing because the 35,000 plus run those prices are a lot less expensive than the the shorter runs. And so, you know, the reason why it doesn't matter if it's physical because it's still a collectible. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. I feel like a lot of people heard of Top Shot and NFTs from your blog post where you kind of broke it down. How did you first hear of Top Shot and NFTs? Um, I don't even remember, mm. but my first step, um, I went to a company Mintable dot, or a site Mintable.app and I just started minting them. And then I minted, I took a GIF of me walking into um, the Mavs arena to work out. And I decided to post it for sale thinking, you know, so I, I did 10 or 20, I forget for $25, the equivalent of $25 in ETH. And as I was going through setting it up and I'm thinking to myself, no one's going to buy this shit, right? Nobody. And then I saw this part to set up a royalty and I'm like, you're kidding me, right? So this is the first time with digital content or goods at all that you could participate in the resale market. So that was like, okay, I got to learn more about what's going on here. So I did my little GIF and I sold, I think it was 20 for $25 each. Then they started reselling and reselling. And I kept on getting, you know, these transactions in in my wallet for more and more and more money. And, And so I learned very quickly that I needed to learn what NFTs were all about because this could change how things were marketed. This could change how... Um, digital content is monetized, um, how IP is monetized. And so that's when I start digging in and that led me to Top Shots. Very cool. I know in the past, Alex and I have both interviewed you and you've yeah, said- Yeah, I remember. Oh gosh, here we go. Yeah, no. <laughs> We're so sorry. Yeah. Apologies. Apologies for the wasted time there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it, it, in both times, I think we asked you about starting a business and you mentioned- like artificial intelligence as like the the business that you would want to build around has that changed based on this blockchain and nft you know industry taking off as, as that's high a great as question gone? so ai has the bigger payoff right now right um but it's a lot harder blockchain is the path of least resistance because as complicated as it sounds it's not and so trying to understand how blockchains work and there's a ton of competition competition you know Top Shots uses Flow from Dapper Labs, and that's one version of a blockchain. Ethereum's got theirs. Um, Bitcoin has got theirs. Every, there's a zillion different blockchains right now, and each of them have their different pluses and minuses. So there's challenges there. And it's like the early days of the internet when everybody had a website. You know, And at the beginning, everybody thought it was hard to set up a website. And companies found you know, the high school kid who learned HTML and JavaScript to set it up for him, and then they realized it was easy. This is the same thing. There's a lot of opportunities to take um, blockchain and smart contracts and create Web 3.0 versions of things that are being done now. And crypto is really changing a lot of things. Decentralized finance. You know, if you own Ethereum or Bitcoin or some other things, you you basically 
you know, make money as your own personal banker, lending money, borrowing money, arbitraging it. it it's just really, really crazy right now. And it's going to get crazier um, now with the stimulus checks, because the reality is you get a stimulus check. And if you don't have to spend it to pay your bills, right, you can save it. Why put it in the bank? Because you're going to make 0.02% and it's going to take you 20 years to make $20 or whatever, right? Whereas if you buy $600 worth of crypto uh, in a wallet someplace, um, and setting up wallets aren't as easy as they're going to need to be, but you can figure your way through it. Then, you know, if you're careful and do your homework using decentralized finance, you can go make four, six, eight, ten percent, or you know, by lending that money out, or you know, borrow three hundred dollars in a heartbeat. You know, and it's still easier. Like I was talking to somebody today about setting up a checking account at Wells Fargo for a business, and it's two weeks in, and they're still working on it. Pandemic or not, it shouldn't be that way. Whereas with crypto, I mean, Top Shots is one way. You know, one of the beauties of Top Shots is you can buy it a moment just like you buy a pair of socks, right? You just put your credit card in. And that's one of the most brilliant things that they did. Um, but for other things, you have to set up a wallet. But what you when once you do, and it's easier than having a bank account, we're getting to the point. We're not there 100% where anything you can do with your bank account, you can do with a, a crypto account far more efficiently with far better returns and a lot less a lot less friction you know no one likes the hassle of dealing with the banks and their transaction fees and i'm not saying particularly on ethereum that transaction fees aren't outer worldly right now they are but as you understand when and how to trade you literally can create businesses get greater returns on your money if you really do your homework I'm curious about the future of Top Shot because we know that they have a licensing deal with the NBA and the NBPA. So the league and its players are making money off this right now. But do you think we'll see the NBA continue to embrace Top Shot even more? And if so, what could that look like? Yeah, I mean, look, of course you're going to see it. And it really comes down to what players do. That's that's the unknown. Like I'm trying to get Luca to sit down for lunch for me because we've already got it set up for him to do an auction for a non-game token that he can do or not game NFT rather that he can do, right? Just him smiling, you know, or we've got some that are drawings of him. Who knows how much people are going to bid for that, right? If it's, you know, a Luca authored original NFT, it could be on Top Shot if there's a program there for players to do that, or it could be off of Top Shot. And so we'll see what players do will have a big impact. But, you know, what, what, um, Roham and, and Dapper and Top Shot are doing right now in terms of seeding the market, you know, is just brilliant. And there's no reason for the NBA not to continue to do that. And we'll see extent, that extended to teams. Teams are going to need to, and we're trying to figure out how to do this to go to using blockchain for ticketing. And once you start doing that, then you can start offering NFTs from, you know, or moments from Top Shot as part of your um, ticket and create in incremental value in a hundred ways. And that can become, that becomes immediately tradable and saleable, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all kinds of iterations that these things can offer that are just crazy. Yeah. And it seems inevitable that we talk about NFTs and all these projects that are very successful. However, I've heard this from a number of different people. I think Gary V was the one who mentioned 99.9% .9 of these are probably going to fail. Oh, of course. Uh, so, so my, my question is, how do you decide which ones you will purchase and why are you bullish on maybe a top top shot specifically? Well, it's kind of spray and pray to a certain point, right? You know, some of them aren't going to work and you just, you know, and what I use to determine is really the size of the community because what's happening is it's, it's almost like Dogecoin, right? It's not that Dogecoin has any intrinsic value other than having fun. It's just that there's a community of Dogecoin lovers that really have fun with it and are just insane about it. And that's what I look for is the community of buyers and say like people has insane rich buyers, right? He just sold something for $69 million today. Blau sold something for 3.3 million. Kings of Leon did $2 million worth of stuff. And so you look for really rabid, strong communities and there's no bigger rabid, strong community than Top Shot right now. You know, you can go to cryptoslam.io and you can see all the information. And it's just right there. And, you know, there's 122,000. I looked earlier today, um, buyers for Top Shots and there's nobody else even close. So yeah. that tells you the community is there and it's just starting. 122,000 is bigger than anybody else, but it's tiny versus the future market. So this is only going to get bigger. 
No, absolutely. Uh, I think we're ready to open up some packs. Uh, Mark, okay, you, ha you have your pack, right? Yes, I do. Let me get to my account here. And okay, perfect. Let me go to Moments. And if, click, and if you click share screen at the bottom too, we can pop your screen up and people can see what you're opening if that works for you. Wait, hold on, because I've got two different browsers here. So okay. Let me, let me see if I can pull this off. Yeah, no worries. Um, share, and let's see if it goes to where it needs to go. NBA Top Shots, and let's see where my packs. I'm gonna bring Jacob, Jacob in. Yeah, Jacob. Yeah, I brought a backpack. Can you guys see this? Not it's yet. It's not sharing at the moment. Let me see. Well, share screen. Let me go again. What is going on, fellas? Thanks hey, for having up? me, Alex. This is, uh, we appreciate you. Share this. screen. If you're in, uh, if you're in StreamYard, the link in StreamYard, it says share screen down there. Um, yeah, I did that. And can you guys oh, see it weird. now? No, it's not popping up. I don't know why. Um, Wait, I'm in Chrome and it says Top Shot profile. What about now? Nope, I'm not seeing it. Oliver, you're not. Are you seeing it either? It's no. not popping up. Well, let me okay. try. Let me try something a little differently. Hold on okay. here. Um, yeah, no worries. Let me geek out here for a minute. Top shot. Well, we're, while you do that, everyone, this is Jacob Eisenberg. He's the community lead from NBA Top Shot. Thanks for joining us, Jacob. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, uh, Mark. Thanks for joining the show. Excited to have you. Hold Jacob, on. do you have any ideas to fix this? Because I know you're kind of the expert of these openings. No, Jacob, what, what's going on is I have multiple windows open in Chrome. And, oh, I had you for a second. There we go. Your entire screen, duh, share. Boom, there it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, awesome. Hold oh on. my gosh. Say. I'll remove how, it. How crazy is all that, right? So go back to Top Shot and then we'll yeah. get to you. There we go. All there right. we go. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> All right. You, so you like that, you know, that perpetual window thing? That was pretty yeah, cool. That yeah. That was really cool. All right. So you have a run it back pack. There's actually yep. a few Mavericks in here, I believe. Dirk, Sean Marion. So we'll see if you pull some Mavs. But yeah, so go ahead and open it and we'll see what you get. We get. Here we go. Da -da 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 do you get do you get some anxiety opening these things at all? Yeah, hell you yeah. Feel, you I was a kid when I opened up baseball cards. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see you pull a map. Come on. Let's see what we get out of this. There it is. Okay, ready. Number one. Ooh. Set. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> we could not have planned this. Oh, he's playing the Clippers. Oh, way to put it on DeAndre. That's a Luka move right there. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> That's a super low serial mark. You I say, that's a great a moment. It's just yeah, the wrong person grabbed it. Yeah, let's go back. <laughs> Wait, that way. I clicked on the wrong thing, so let's go back to open again. Open your pack. Hold my horses again. Sorry, guys. No worries. No, you're good. I was so over Tim Duncan. You had to just leave the whole uh, site. We get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the next one. The hot. Right. Cam Reddish. Cam right. Reddish. Another connection to Luca. You guys know the connection to Luca there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's included in the trade, right? Is that the, the yeah. that's the pick that was included in the trade? What's the serial. I'm trying to see. Oh, I see. Two thousand three hundred sixty-two. Okay. All right. I got to ask you, Mark. Serial huh? numbers. How much do they mean to you? They mean a lot, right? So a low serial number is obviously a plus. Um, there's a low one right there. Yeah, there's one. Two hundred nine is good. That's great. Yeah, typically, you know, lower the better than jersey numbers have been. You know, obviously, what yeah, match. And also, like, if you're out of 1,500 in this case, having, you know, number 1,500 is not a bad thing either. No, yeah, so. not at all. The not at all. The last one minted, yep. Okay, so let's go to my next reveal. Okay, Trevor, but it's still, you know, an LE. That's not bad. <laughs> He's talking the Top Shot talk. He's got it all down, man. <laughs> I love it. You're a pro. You're a veteran here. So I got, I got to ask, how validating is it for you? You made a bold move. You trade up and get Luca. He's looked at as one of the best young players in the NBA, and he's the most coveted, one of the most coveted players on Top Shot. What, I mean, what? You, you gotta win, right? It all comes down to winning. <laughs> it all comes. Okay, Justin Holiday, Metallic Gold Limited Edition. We'll take that's it. That's a nice one. We'll take Out of it. Two ninety nine. Number fifty eight. That's not yeah. bad. No, not bad at all. Okay, so. No, I've got four more shots here. Dang, look at this. There's a lot right. of moments in these packs. Can we get I a dirt? Can we get a dirk or a Sean Marion maybe? Nope. So we need wait, to get I at least one map. 2013, 2014. 
So you're going to get two moments from 2013-14 in this pack, and the okay. rest are going to be from uh, last season. So these are all low series um, sets, too, so that's good. Yeah. That's exactly yep. right. Ooh, Dunk. Miles, Miles Bridges. Bridges. Okay. Miles Bridges. Okay, I like that. I feel like every single one of his dunks could be a crazy moment. He always has just like two, three crazy dunks per game. He's nuts. So let me tell you this. The other thing to consider is pandemic games are going to start being scarce in the future, right? Because we're going to be getting away. So you see great dunk, but you see all the fans, right? And so as you, and this is a low serial number, but not low enough. But <laughs> like, as you go into future years, this there's only going to be, you know, one and a half years basically of, um, a series that have fans in, or that don't have fans in them. So I yeah. think you know, just jacking on to, um, oh, you guys hit me. this again, minimal series, minimal numbers. That's cool. All right. This is my last chance y'all. This has to be or it. The, this has to be the, the throwback. Right? Oh, here it is. Throwback. Oh, Thunder. Oh, Thunder. Back Thunder. Rare 2111. Nick, Nick Collison. <laughs> oh my God. Of all people. Right. <laughs> That's a great play though. This He's gonna play. against it, it, it's against the Spurs though. You got to be happy with that, right? No, I know it's great. Two seventy five, <laughs> and it's a really cool play. I'll take them all for and my money. For my money, he's going to be the first Thunder player with their number retired. So there's some yeah, special. Be. And uh, yeah, to mark your point, uh, the Karis Levert I think is the only moment you pulled from the actual bubble in Disney. But yeah. uh, I think you're you're right on that. Those moments are going to have an, an added kind of legacy play here. No question about it. The other thing, like, so I've got two accounts. Don't tell Roham, right? Because, you know, <laughs> somebody actually um, emailed me and said that they had M Cuban, that they had, had gotten it, you know, did I want it back? And they sent me the password. So now I have and everybody thinks, but I've got another account that's got like 40 moments. And, I, you know, back when it first got started, I just started collecting who I thought were Hall of Fame players. And so I put together my own little Hall of Fame collection and my own little um, really cool um, pandemic collection, thinking that, you know, at some point people are going to like the pandemic will be weird, to, particularly to kids five, 10 years from now. And they'll see these games with no fans. And I think those are going to have added value. That's really smart. I hadn't even thought about that. That's really smart. Um, Oliver, you want to go next? You want to open up your pack? Uh, sure. Why not? Yeah, I, I can do that. I did. I did have one more question for Mark here. That is, oh, yeah. it, it, you have one yeah. one moment. In, in your NBA career, it can be from you specifically. It can be from your team. It can be a, a, anything you want. You have one moment to turn into a top shot. What moment are you choosing and why? Oh, when the Mavs won, um, there was a moment and there's a picture where there's 30 seconds left. And, you know, it's so stressful because you just never know when the lead can disappear, right? You could be up 10 points with two minutes to go and you can't be satisfied. But we got down to the point where – there was 10 that we were up 10 with 30 seconds to go. And I just let out this big sigh of relief. And there's a picture of me next to Brendan Haywood and Deshaun Stevenson and some of our staff just holding on to him. Right. And just screaming at the top of my lungs. That would be my top shot moment. And Oliver, let me just ask you a question. You do know how to transfer and trade person to person, right? I do. I'm just saying, as you look at your pack, <laughs> I, I, I've, got, I've got you covered I, I get where you're going with that all right noted <laughs> all right if there's a Dallas Maverick in here we know where it's going Let's yes it's it better <laughs> all right you want to open this here we go let's do it let's take a look taking a second here all right here we go Clippers dunk Abaka. All right. All right. See, I get even more specific with these serials too. I mean, if it's like he's number nine, if there's a nine 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 serial, I think that's more valuable. I, I start really diving into that. Birthdays, yeah. area codes, um, <laughs> like where they, where they were born. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, just obsessing over numbers all day long. There you go. Just everything, everything. Darius Garland, fifteen ninety nine. That's a good serial. Okay. Nice. The numerologists in our community are absurd. Crazy. I love it. You know, <laughs> crazy. The, What's the, the, oh, the go draft ahead. class year is a big one that I've seen. I, I believe in. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Birth year for sure. Um, you know, obviously we have the the sixty nine and the four twenties are super popular. Um, but I think when we're talking about uh, the way that this is going, like of course 
because we're so early in this game, you know, 35,000 seems so large to, to the community that's been there for a while. But I think we're going to continue to see circulating counts, addition sizes continue to grow. Of course. And uh, we're so early in it. So early. Yeah. So plus, early. I think I think people were just kind of jazzed because the prices went down right when the bigger sets came out, which makes sense. That's the way it's supposed to work. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What's it, Mark? What's your lowest serial that you have currently? Serial number of, of a, a moment. Um, I've got a couple of, uh, less than a hundred. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I, RJ Barrett, four thousand eight. All right. Bad Mark, I have, an, there. I have an NBA question for you while we uh, while we open these up. I'm just curious. Wow. The NBA trade deadline is approaching. How do you determine, like, as as an organization, if you should be like a buyer or a seller? Like, what are those conversations that are happening? It's just like, look, unless we can get better, what's the point? But if someone makes us an offer we can't refuse, you take it. You know, so you don't because it takes two teams, right? And and so you. Teams aren't don't all of a sudden get stupid because it's the trade deadline. <laughs> and, and so at least most of the time. And but things change at, for various reasons. So go ahead. Talk about your your Wiggins. I, I thought I, I thought yeah. it was a curry for two I seconds. You I'm super sorry. Excited. I got a little more excited than I thought I should. And uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, but shout out to Andrew Wiggins, though. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins. No, <laughs> good, serial no, number. good serial number. Great poll. Um, Having a great season. Yeah. Having a good season. The defensive end. It's a great serial number. Yep. Last one here, Boston Celtics, Taco. Taco. Okay, I have to ask, did you guys scout Taco at all? Yeah, like, what, what, <laughs> what is your what is your opinion of someone at that size in in the game of basketball? Because it's just it's mind boggling to me that somebody can be that size and as you know as versatile as he is. To be honest, um, we wanted a playmate for Boban and KP. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, awesome. look, he's he, just like Boban. He's a situational player. There's certain scenarios because he can get so close to the rim and be effective. As you know, if you can play zone or you've got a, another player on the other team that doesn't shoot, then situationally he's great. Um, and it's the same with Boban, right? Boban is so skilled and is so dominant by the rim. But if you're playing five out and you've got a lot of shooters, then it's tough. All right. Last last pack opening here. Here we go. And then we have we have one pack to still give away too. We're gonna give away one M pack. M Cuban. Here. M Cuban. <laughs> M Cuban. There you go. There you go. Hey, you you guys can still enter right now, by the way. Uh basketballnews.com slash top shot, and you'll be entered for the pack. And then also we give we're giving away a LeBron James moment uh on April 1st. It's a number 283 out of 7,500. So go to basketballnews.com slash top shot and you can go ahead and enter that. All right, we need we need a Dallas Maverick though. Have we not pulled one? We haven't Dallas pulled a single Maverick? Maverick, so yeah, we got we got to change that. Let's go. Warriors, Andrew Wiggins. All right, let's open it up. Ten thousand. You went double the Wiggins, huh? Yeah, yeah. All, so. We're all getting Wiggins here. Okay. I hope we get a Mav here. We have to get at least one. Oh, oh my gosh. Rare Spurs. Keldon Johnson. Keldon oh, Johnson. <laughs> 167 out of 499. That's right. how old. He didn't have a series one moment as a rookie. So, you know, this is, I'm not positive if this is the, the first one because he also mm. has a face set moment. But I think Keldon's a stud. I think it's a good point. No, he's really yeah. good. Yeah, he's really good. Keldon, become a superstar for me, buddy. I need it. Uh, all right, let's go. Orlando Magic. Dwayne Bacon. Let's open that up. 6,764 out of 12,000. All right. We had uh, Terrence Ross open in some packs, and he said that Dwayne Bacon was the best uh, layup finisher on his team. So that was pretty cool just to get that insight. Do you have any other players uh, that you could announce, Jacob, that are going to be open in packs? I know you had Rudy Gobert recently. That was awesome. Are there any other players that uh, you can share with us or guys that are coming back to do it again? Yeah, I mean, we're in touch with a bunch of guys around the league. I think this weekend you're going to see uh, maybe some rookies get involved that haven't yet gotten involved. Uh, I don't want to reveal any names quite yet. Sure, um, sure. Josh Hart is fiending for packs always, so always. we're going to get something with him going soon. No, um, I do. I'm going to start collecting travels and fouls that weren't called. <laughs> <laughs> there you I, go, was I, I was waiting for you to mention – 
as your moment that you would pick on Top Shot to be like an argument with one of the referees at one point <laughs> right. in time. I was Absolutely. just waiting for that one. Right. It, wouldn't be, it right. wouldn't be it wouldn't be a Mark Cuban interview without a shot at the refs. I love of it. Of course, of course. Or so we finished uniform. We finished pretty strong. We got Bradley Beal, Chris Middleton, and Kevin Durant uh, to to wrap up. So not bad, not too shabby. Um, Mark, Mark, the one Mavs moment that I think would be awesome, and I'm going to put you on the spot here, the 2003-2004 season, uh, season opener against the Lakers. It was Carl Malone, Gary Payton's debut with the Ma uh, with the Lakers, going against your Mavs. I don't know if you remember uh, what about that game was unique. Yeah, the trash, can, the trash can uniforms. Absolutely. That's right. They That's finally, right. We had brand new uniforms that we thought were so cool, but we had never really had them on during a game. And when the players played in them, they looked like trash cans. The sweat made them look like trash cans. We never wore them again. That was the one time. I really want that to be a moment. And uh, I know your backstory, you, your entrepreneurial career got started as a, a trash bag salesman. So I was yep, curious see? if you had any kind of... No. No, there was not. That was not meant to be at all. That was not the mission at all. It was brutal, and we got destroyed. And I was so pissed. I was like, "Just toss these uniforms. Get them the hell out." <laughs> so we have one more pack here. This one's actually going to give. Uh, we're giving it away. Um, and I put the name. I'm not sure on on Streamyard, Mark. If we put the name of the winner in the in the Streamyard, can you announce that for us, Mark? If you see it there, where open your. I don't oh, see wait. it. Should it's be on private chat. Yeah, the oh, private, private chat. chat. Oh, okay. Wait, where's oh there you go. Uh, we can, we can go ahead and it. Oh, there it is. And the winner is Matthew Cullen. There, there we go. go. Matthew, congrats, man. We will uh we'll reach out over email and then once gifting is back pretty uh, soon here, we'll send you these moments. Uh, and you guys can still enter. We have two more packs to give away over the next two weeks. And then on April 1st, we're giving away a LeBron James moment that is numbered 283 out of 700 or 7,500. So Matthew Colon, Matthew Colon, I'm not sure how to say it, Matthew Colon, uh, we are giving you, this is your pack. So let's go ahead and open it and see what Matthew got. Watch, Matthew's going to be the one to get a Mav. Let's see. Yeah, so everyone, make sure you guys enter that giveaway at basketballnews.com slash top shot. You guys can uh, can go ahead and win another pack potentially and then maybe win that LeBron James moment as well. All right. Is this still showing up for you guys? Can you see this? We can see it. Loading. Okay, cool. Just making sure. We can see it. It's loading. All right, here we go. All right, Matthew. Let's see what you got. He's got a San Antonio Spur to start this out. Kelvin Keldon Johnson. 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 Me and Matthew hey. were in the Kelvin Johnson club together. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, oh I thought it was a, I thought it was a Maverick. I thought it was blue 10,310 all right Matthew let's see if you get lucky Lakers, Lakers. oh it looks LeBron like LeBron James, James. There you James. There wow. you go. Matthew you want a LeBron James 5,840 wow. out of 15,000 not too shabby what a pack what yeah. a pack there you go so Congrats, shout out Matthew. To Matthew. there we go well done so if you guys want to enter our giveaway, you can do that. Sorry, the music's playing in my ear still. If you guys want to enter our giveaway, you can do that at basketballnews.com slash top shot. And yeah, you guys can win one of these packs. You can win a LeBron moment. Mark, we want to thank you so much for your time. Thanks my for opening pleasure, guys. Thanks Have for having me. I get more packs, more packs. Send more yeah, packs. Yeah. Let's, let's make this a weekly thing. You can come you know, on. Like, we can open a pack. Oh, everybody out there, you need to learn how the transfer function works. And so just pick any moment and just, just transfer it. it. Yeah, just <laughs> test it. Transfer it to M. Cuban. Why not? <laughs> Couldn't hurt. Couldn't I hurt. I love it. Yeah, try right, guys. to the NBA too. Uh, but no, Mark, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Anytime. Thanks, Take care. And then Jacob, thank you so much too. Thanks. We appreciate it, man. You guys have built something really, really cool. We're loving it as fans of it. So thanks for joining us to chat about it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, a few PSAs for the Top Shot community. Uh, we so so not to to ruin Mark's uh, thunder there, but gifting is currently disabled. We'll have it re-enabled very soon uh, within the next few days. 
uh, I think by Tuesday is kind of what we're targeting nice. at the latest. And uh, it will come out with some modifications. So we're excited about that. Um, a lot of the, the things that we're building right now, uh, we're building with a keen eye toward how can we uh, combat scammers and bots from kind of abusing the system because we really want the Top Shot community and the purists, the collectors amongst the bunch to have a fair playing field. And, uh, you know, in the past month, two months, we've really uh, seen exponential growth, as you both know well. And uh, in that, we've had kind of some bad actors have, who've also been able to kind of try to take advantage. So uh, now we're trying to kind of reset the score a bit and, and level the playing field. So, uh, you know, gifting, uh, we're going to revamp what that looks like. Um, Signups right now are disabled. We'll be uh, opening those up again pretty soon. Uh, but all in all, it's uh, we're really excited and uh, awesome to see this show. A great first show for you guys. Uh, excited to see what this looks like going forward. Uh, you guys, uh, Alex, uh, your flu game, as you were saying, offline, yeah. coming <laughs> off of a surgery, hosting a show. You're you're the MVP here. Yeah, yeah I hope MVP. it wasn't. Hope it wasn't too obvious. Uh, had surgery Tuesday, but had to be here. When Mark Cuban is the guest, you can't just reschedule or bail. So had to make it here. But we, we thank everyone for joining. This has been so much fun. And yeah, we'll be back every Thursday. This is our new show, NBA Top Shot Weekly. It's a show every Thursday. We're going to be opening up packs, having on different guests. We want to thank Mark for being our first guest and Jacob for being uh, for being our guest as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, guys. Quick shout out too. I mean, Jacob, by the way, like your entire team, the NBA Top Shot like crew, uh, I don't think there's like, you guys are very, very transparent about like, you know, combating the bot situation and like making that known. And so I think that's important to like fully understand like how much work and effort and energy you guys are putting in each and every day to try and make this a better, better site, a uh, better platform. And uh, a more honest and transparent platform than you know your your, your typical. Uh, there's there's many different companies that do a similar kind of concept, not like NFTs, but in the shoe game, you've got sneakers and 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 botting is always an issue wherever you go. So you guys trying to like combat that and really you know hit it head on is is really vital and important, I think, to the Top Shot community, and and we appreciate that. So. No, absolutely. No, thanks for thanks for saying that. I think that when we're building this, right, we don't really have a historical precedent to lean on and learn from, right? So we are kind of carving out new territory in the space, and uh, that comes with growing pains. And I, I wouldn't say that we've gotten everything perfect, but we are certainly trying our best. And I, I think, uh, you know, as, as we continue to learn and as we continue to build this platform, uh, Great community members like yourselves uh, will only continue to give us great feedback and, and and continue to help us improve and hold us accountable to make sure that we become the best platform for every NBA fan in the world. The crazy thing too is you guys are still in beta. Like this happens so quickly. And I know we were talking about it, Jacob before, but I know in December you guys had like 30,000 users and then it grew to 60,000 after your Tyler Hero endorsement. But the way this has ramped up has been so quick. And the fact that you guys are having this much success and this big of a community while you're still in beta, it's been pretty incredible to see. Yeah, we're very much still in beta. And uh, that's like where the growing pains are coming from. And we're not trying to dodge that, right? And I think at times the community gets frustrated. Um, but like when I look back at some some decks and slide decks I was putting together in January and just like how far we've come in two months, the you know, we've implemented a queue, we fixed any kinks with the queue, we now have a really smooth drop experience. Uh, we're figuring out how to make the marketplace work for everyone in kind of the fairest way possible. Um, we have a pre-order pack coming out to everyone that ordered that pack a couple of weeks ago, and, and that's going to get delivered on the timeline we promised. So uh, we are chewing on a lot of things, right? There's always some, there's always a lot of action going on. Um, and we're you know, getting into a really nice groove. Um, certainly, uh, I think there's always going to be a vocal minority that that wants to, you know, troll and, and say that we're not moving fast enough. But um, I think that where we are today compared to where we were a month ago is, is really drastic. And uh, I think that we're continuing to catch up on all of that kind of exponential growth we saw. So I, I couldn't be more excited about the future ahead. I think we have some awesome packs getting dropped really soon. Um, we've got some oh. 
really cool challenges coming up. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to make some top shot firsts in the next month that uh, I think the community is going to be really excited about. So, yeah. I feel like it's better to have a rabid fan base and a super passionate following than just, you know, the, the alternative is no one caring. So it, it's frustrating at times, I'm sure, but it has to be pretty exciting. This many people care and are this passionate about your product. Yeah. And it, it comes with great responsibility, right? Like at the end of the day, uh, people are putting real money into this and, and they are, you know, really passionate about the NBA, really passionate about collecting. And we want to make sure that we're, we're leaning in with empathy and, and trying to make everyone have the best collector experience possible. I think, uh, you know, whenever we are able to give a, a little peek under the hood of just all that's going on, I think it, it does help kind of uh, clear the air that like none of uh, the, the growing pains that we're going through are, are things that A, we could have really anticipated and B, things that we want to have as growing pains, right? So I think when we're talking about uh, our community, uh, the patience has been appreciated. We are going to continue to ask for the community's patience as we kind of catch up to the demand. And I have no doubt that we're on the right track. And uh, every day we're making great progress toward uh, delivering on the promise of the best platform we can offer. And uh, I don't have a timeline on when we're going to leave beta, but certainly we have a lot of work to do before we're able to get there. There are people in the comments right now offering Mark Cuban a Luca moment for his Tim Duncan moment. It's pretty funny to see. Um, then reach out to him on Twitter. Send him a tweet. We'll see if he's interested. Um, but yeah, we want to thank you for doing this, Jacob. Oliver, anything else you want to throw in there before we jump off here? No, that, it, it, big fun. Uh, really enjoyed everybody's comments and everybody's uh, enthusiasm. And Mark was, as always, great. Can't can't expect anything better than that. And uh, it was a lot of fun, guys. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we'll be back next Thursday. Uh, Jacob, anything you want to jump in with? No, I again, I appreciate y'all. Um, I think this show is going to be awesome. I, I couldn't be more excited to be a part of the first episode and uh, uh, excited to see what you pull next week. We're super excited. Uh, we're talking to some people. We might have an all-star. I don't want to give anything away, but we might have an all-star as our, first, our next guest. So we'll be back next Thursday. Again, in the meantime, make sure you guys enter our giveaway at basketballnews.com slash top shot. Uh, we'll, Oliver and I are tweeting out a bunch, so you can find it there. But that's where you're entered to uh, win one of these packs that we're giving away. And then also you can uh, win a LeBron James moment potentially on April 1st. We're going to give that moment away. It's a LeBron James moment, number 283 out of 7,500. So yeah, basketballnews.com slash top shot. Check that out. And we'll be back next Thursday. Thanks, everyone.